Hi everyone, welcome to the Bioinformatics Talk Series. Today I am going to talk about variant calling. This is the first episode by the way. There will be other episodes on this same topic and each of those episodes will focus on the use of different tools. For this talk, I will give a description of how a combination of these tools can be used to call variants on real world data. And let me also say that I have covered a separate um, tutorial which gives you the step-by-step -step instructions codes and commands you can use to call variants using a combination of these tools on real world data. So that video is more like the practical session, okay, the practical um, components of this particular talk. So this talk will be more of the theory, um, loosely speaking, and then that particular video is the practical. So you can just watch that video. The link to that video is in the description box. I also leave it at the end of this talk. So here's the workflow I use for that um, tutorial I made mention of the practical one and that is what I will describe here. So if you want to call variant, you need to have your data, you need to have your sequence reads. Depending on your objectives, you may have to generate your own data by doing sequencing of your organisms or isolates or uh, looking at downloading reads from publicly available databases. So just uh, notes. If you want to look at learning, if you are into learning, if you are just considering learning about bioinformatics, then you don't have to generate your own data. You can just go for those data sets available online and just use them for your practical. And that is what I did in that video I made mention of. So in that video, I also show you how to download an example data and then use that for the work. Once you have your sequence reach, it is important to also perform quality control. So Quality control is done by trimming the reads. That is one um, of, of the steps you do in quality control. So you trim reads to remove um, reads that are of low quality. You also trim to remove reads that are bad. You also trim to remove adapters. And so in general, trimming helps to improve the quality of your reads. Okay. But um, you also need to um, check the reads. Okay. Before trimming and after trimming, you need to look at the quality and then look at which of them will be appropriate for your downstream work. So talking about quality, another thing you have to do as part of the quality control is to check the quality of your reads and then the basis. So you need to inspect them and then check the quality. So you need to check the quality and know how the quality is distributed across the basis. Tools like FastQC can help you do that. FastQC will do some analysis and then generate plots that you can use to visualize the quality and then understand the reads better in terms of quality. So it's important you do that. So just make sure um, you do that aspect as well. So with the trimming, there are lots of tools available for trimming, but for this talk, I'll just make mention of one, which is circle. So circle can be used to trim reads. Um, if the reads are paired, then you can use circle. If it's a single end data, you can also use circle to do that. So circle can trim reads and then you can also um, use that to remove reads that uh, do not have or do not have qualities up to a particular threshold. You can also use circle to remove reads that uh, reads whose lens fall below a particular threshold that you said. There are other options in circle that you can use. I will leave the link to the circles uh, documentation page and you can just use that to read more about this particular trimming tool. So let's proceed. So once you are done with the trimming, you do what you call mapping. So mapping helps you to identify regions or locations in the reference genome uh, where the reads best match or where the reads match. Okay. So it is important to that because that will help you to know where these reads um, came from, where the reads originated. And the information you get from the mapping is used by the variant callers to get the variant for you. So just make sure and you do that. So again, there are several tools for doing mapping, but for this talk, I'll just make mention of one, which is the Burroughs Wheeler Aligner. So go check it out. I will leave the link in the description box where you can use that to also visit the page and read about this particular mapping tool. So let's proceed. So once you have the mapping done, you will generate a SAM file, and then the SAM file has to be converted to BAM files. So SAM files and BAM files, they are basically the same file, but these are different formats. So the SAM files are larger. BAM files are more compressed, okay? So if you want to save space, then you have to get this in the BAM formats. 
once you have the BAM formats, you also need to sort the BAM files. Some variant colors require that you sort your BAM files. So the BAM files, they are alignments. That's what you need to know. They are alignments. So after mapping, the alignment information um, will be stored in the BAM file or the SAM file. Any of them is the same. So that's what you need to do. So the conversion of the SAM to BAM and then the sorting of the BAM file um, can be done using some tools. So just um, look at that. And some tools can also um, generate mapping statistics. That will help you to know um, the percentage of reads that map to the reference. Them. So it's important to also check that as well. So that will help you to understand the data and then um, help you to um, look at the next course of action for your data. So make sure you do that as well. Again, I'll leave the link in the description box for you to check the some tools help page. Now, once you have done the mapping you've done the sorting and then you have your sorted bound file then it's time for bcf tools to take over so you do what to call mpile app using bcf tools so the mpile app will, 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 will be done so that bcf tools can compute the genotype likelihood so it is like the coverage information for the basis and position so it is this information that BCF tools again will use to call the variants. So the mpilab command will do the genotype likelihood computation and then BCF tools command, again, this command here, BCF tools call will be used to identify the variants. So that is what you need to know. So once you have the variants identified, then we do what I call post-VCF. So post-VCF, these are things that you do. These are activities, these are analysis that you do after generating the identifying the variant or generating the VCF. So after calling the variant, the file generated is called a VCF, okay? So that's a variant call format. So this contains the variant. And there are lots of information there. So depend on your research questions and objectives and look at the information there, the appropriate ones there to use for the work. So the post VCF will include filtering. Now, after identifying the variant, you need to look at filtering so it can have high quality variants. Okay, so there's something you also do as part of the post VCF um, work. So again, I have a separate playlist that um, it's also ongoing where I teach you, I show you how to do some of this post VCF uh, analysis. So I'll leave that playlist also at the end of this video and I'll leave the link in the description box as well. So that's what you need to do. So post VCF activities will include filtering, will include counting the variants, even looking at the variant types and then looking at, there are lots of things you can do here. So it is something that um, we are also going to cover in later um, tutorial. So that's what you need to do. So in a nutshell, this is how a combination of the tools I made mention of can be used to call variants. And after calling the variants, then you look at your downstream analysis. So uh, let me also get your comments. And if there's anything that you think uh, should have been added to this talk, you can also put it in the comment section and we can all discuss. Okay, so that will be all for this tutorial. Now, I encourage you to go and check that video tutorial, the practical aspects of this talk, and then just learn about bioinformatics. So, thanks for watching and listening to this talk, and I will see you in the next session. Goodbye.